Tonight's story is called Peter Pan. This is the story of Peter Pan, a boy who never grew up but ran away when he was small to live in the Neverland. The Neverland is an island that children visit in their dreams where anything can happen. To reach it, you have to be able to fly. Peter could fly. Sometimes when he felt lonely, he used to go back to the human world. He listened at nursery windows to the bedtime stories mothers told their children. He hoped that one day he could take some playmates with him to the Neverland. Now in this story there are three children called Wendy, Michael and John. Wendy, Michael and John. Wendy, Michael and John? Yes, they lived happily with their father and mother. Their nurse was called Nana. What? Their nurse, the lady who looks after them and tells them stories, is called Nana. Oh, actually, I beg your pardon, they had an unusual nurse called Nana. It was a big dog, not a person. The dog slept in a kennel in a big nursery. And if one of the children would cry in the night, the dog would wake up straight away. When the children went to school, the dog would go with them. The children's mummy was called Mrs. Darling. Their daddy was called Mr. Darling. Every night, Mrs. Darling, the mummy, would tell the three children, Wendy, Michael and John, a story. Wendy, Michael and John. After she had told the story, she would tuck them into their beds and wish them good night. Daddy Michael, Wendy and John. That's right. When the children were dreaming, they dreamed of Neverland. And they dreamed about a boy called Peter Pan. When they woke up, they would talk to Mummy and Daddy, Mrs. Darling and Mr. Darling, about Peter Pan. Mr. Darling thought it was a silly tale that they'd heard. One day, Mrs. Darling found some funny looking leaves on the windowsill. Wendy said, oh, it must be Peter who dropped them. He's so untidy. She's talking about Peter Pan. No, nobody could get up here. It's three floors high, said Mrs. Darling. You must have been drinking. We just dropped the phone. That was the noise. But Wendy had not been dreaming. The next night, the window blew open and a little boy dressed in green leaves dropped to the floor from the window. A strange light followed him, dancing around the room like a living thing. It was Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. Next night, Peter appeared again at the window. And Tinkerbell was hiding in the bedroom somewhere. 
She was hiding in the chest of drawers. And inside the chest of drawers, Peter's shadow was there as well. Have you noticed how your shadow follows you everywhere when the sun is shining? Well, Peter had left his shadow behind. He went so quickly last time. Luckily, Wendy was there and she sewed his shadow. That's his shadow, the dark shadow there. She sewed it back on. So Peter told Wendy all about how, what his life. Peter Pan told Wendy how he'd run away to live with the fairies. Is that Tinkerbell? And he also lived with the Lost Boys. What's the Lost Boys? And the Lost Boys were children who had fallen out of their prams when the nurses were not looking. Nobody claimed them, so they were sent to the Netherland. So if you're a baby in a pram and you fall out, you become a Lost Boy, unless someone looks for you. Wendy asked Peter Pan about the fairies. Tinkerbell flew out of the drawer. What's, what's the and she landed, that's Tinkerbell, and she landed on the cuckoo clock. Tinkerbell didn't really like Wendy. She was jealous because Wendy was talking to Peter. Michael and John, Wendy's brothers, two brothers woke up. Peter Pan told them all about the gang of lost boys and told them that he was the captain and he told them about his fights with the pirates. Aren't there any lost girls? asked Wendy. No, said Peter. Girls are too clever to fall out of their prams. We don't have any sisters or mothers to tell us stories or to mend our clothes. That's Wendy. Oh, poor you, said Wendy. I know lots of That's stories Wendy. and I could mend your clothes. Who's this? That's, that's Peter Pan. That's Wendy. And the other, ch other children are called Michael and John. That's Michael and that's John with his teddy bear. And that's Tinkerbell. And That's John's teddy bear. And this, uh, where is his teddy bear? Well, perhaps he doesn't have one. And they're all flying with Peter Pan. Peter Pan's helping them all to fly. Why? So Peter, as Wendy said she knows how to tell stories and could mend clothes, Peter Pan decided to teach them all how to fly. And suddenly they're all flying around the bedroom like that, bumping their heads on the ceiling and so on. And then they flew away just as Mr. and Mrs. Darling, their parents came along the street. Their parents saw the nursery window lit up and against the curtains they could see the shadows of the three children in the night clothes circling around, round and round and not on the floor, but in the air. Not three children, but four children. The fourth one was Peter Pan. Mr. and Mrs. Darling they rushed... Make it have a Tinkerbell. They probably could see Tinkerbell too, but she's very small. Mr. and Mrs. Darling rushed upstairs. One, two, three, but it was too late. Four, five, Peter had just said, follow me. And the three children, John, John, Michael and Wendy, all followed Peter, Peter Pan. But where's Tinkerbell here? It took a long, long time to fly to Neverland. At last they saw the Neverland Island. Then Peter told them about the pirates and their dreaded lead leader. The leader of the pirates is called Captain Hook. Ah! And he's very bad. Why? Because he likes to hurt children. Why? 
He was the most bloodthirsty buccaneer that ever sailed the Spanish main. I cut off his right hand, said Peter proudly. Then he can't fight, asked Wendy. Oh yes, he has an iron hook instead of a hand, and he uses it like a claw. The children shivered with fright. One thing you must promise me, said Peter, his eyes glittering sternly. If we meet Captain Hook in an open fight, you must leave me to deal with him. Just then, Tinkerbell flew up. She was tinkling a warning. Ding, 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 ding. The pirates had loaded their big gun and they were waiting to shoot. Where? They could tell where Peter and his friends were by Tinkerbell's light. Suddenly there was an enormous bang. Bang! The gun had been fired. The blast blew them onto their backs and scattered them. On the, on the Neverland, there are six lost boys. There was Tootles, Nibs, Slightly and Curly. And lastly, there were twins. Here are the lost boys. Mm -hmm. And also on the island are the pirates. Here they are. They're the bad ones. And this? this yes. And the leader was Captain Hook, the worst of them all. Captain Hook. He treated his men like dogs and smoked two cigars at once. You see him smoking two cigars in his mouth there? One, two. lost boys fired an arrow into the sky but unfortunately he hit Wendy in the heart with the arrow oh no said the lost boy you've hurt Wendy the boys crowded round to see we thought they'd shot a bird but then they saw it was a girl a mother to take care of us at last said the twins and Tootles has shot her Toodles wanted to run away. He was so ashamed. And then Peter arrived. Peter said, Have you seen Wendy? She came this way. The lost boys stood aside and showed them Wendy. Showed him Wendy. She is dead, said Peter sternly. Who shot her? I did, said Tootles. Now kill me. Peter raised the arrow to strike when Wendy lifted her arm. Poor Tootles, she moaned. She's alive, Peter cried. The arrow had struck the acorn button of her chain and saved Wendy's life. Luckily it hadn't hit her at all. Listen to Tink, said Curly. She's crying because Wendy's not dead. Tinkerbell was jealous. She wanted Wendy dead. They told Peter what Tinkerbell had done. Go away, Tinkerbell, forever, Peter cried. I am no longer your friend. But Wendy raised her arm again. Well, not forever, only for a week, Peter relented. Do you think Tinkerbell was grateful? No, she wasn't. Why? She wanted to pinch Wendy more than ever. Fairies are funny creatures. 
What shall we do with Wendy, said the children. I know, said Peter, we'll build a little house for her. So the boys rushed off to fetch branches, bedding and firewood. Michael and John joined in. Bit by bit, the little house was built with a green moss carpet and red walls, a door and windows. The children planted roses all around it. Then Peter said, where's the chimney? So they took the hat, top hat and put it on the roof and it began to smoke. This is your own little house, Peter said to Wendy. And we are all your children, said the lost boys. Wendy smiled. Come inside, she said, and I'll tell you the story of Cinderella. And that's what the children did. They came inside and listened to the story of Cinderella. And Aidan did, uh, not Aidan, Wendy did some cooking. And all the children got to eat with, with Wendy. As the we weeks went by, Michael and John began to forget that she was not their real mother. They started to think that she was really their real mother. She was really their sister, but they, they thought she was their mother. Every day, the boys would go off on adventures organised by Peter. That's Captain Hook. Oh, yes. That's Captain Hook in the water. So... Safe inside their cave, the children were sat round for a make-believe tea with Wendy. Wendy told them a story to settle them down. Just then, Peter came back. He knew what time it was because there was a crocodile which had swallowed a clock and where it goes tick-tock, tick-tock all the time. It's story time, said Wendy. And she began to tell the story that Peter hated. It was about three children who had a nurse called Dana and how they flew away from home one night and how their father and mother missed them. Think how sad they were then when they saw the empty beds, she said. Then came the part that Peter hated most. She told them how much their mothers loved children. The mother always left the window open for the children to fly back. So they stayed away for years and had a lovely time. Peter was very upset. Wendy, you're wrong about mothers, he said. Then he told them what had happened when he went back home. I thought, like you, that my mother would always keep the window open for me. So I stayed away a long time. Then I flew back, but my mother had forgotten me. The window was shut, and there was another little boy in my bed, <laughs> cried Peter. Michael and John also began to cry and Wendy comforted them. They were afraid their mother might forget them too. They begged Wendy to take them home. They must be missing their mummy. Would you miss your mummy if you went away? Uh, I don't know. Don't the lost to... boys wanted to come too, and Wendy promised that she would ask Mr and Mrs Darling to adopt them. Peter was very hurt, but he was too proud to show it. He would not keep Wendy against his will, her will, so he pretended not to care. I will ask the Redskins, that's the in Indians, to show you the way through the wind, wood, and Tinkerbell can guide you when you fly over the sea. Ooh. But aren't you coming too, pleaded Wendy. Oh no, they would make me grow up. I want to stay a little boy forever and have fun. What about you? Do you want to stay a little boy forever? Yes. Peter shook hands with Wendy.
Wendy and the boys were captured by the pirates. When they tried to go home, the pirates captured them and they were kept prisoner, so they couldn't go anywhere. But Tinkerbell told Peter Pan that they had been captured by the pirates. I'll rescue them, cried Peter, grasping his sword. And now to rescue Wendy, said Peter, and off he went. Peter came up through the tree to the moonlight wood and set out on his perilous quest. No one was about except for the crocodile, which never slept. Is it going to tick tock? The, the cro crocodile goes tick tock because it swallowed the clock. Captain Hook said the children must walk the plank. Bring out the plank, ordered Captain Hook. Here's the plank, plank of wood. They have to walk the plank and get, jump into the sea. Wendy was brought up to see the boys walk to their death in the briny ocean. Have you any last message for your children? Sneered Hook to Wendy. Wendy despised the pirates. She spoke out firmly. All your mothers hope you will die bravely like true Englishmen. Tie her to the mast, Hook shouted. The boy's eyes were on the plank. It was the last walk they would ever take. There was a grim silence. It was broken by a strange silence. The tick, tick tick of a crocodile. Everyone looked at Hook. Hook collapsed with fear because he's frightened of crocodiles. The sound came nearer. Hook fell to the deck. He crawled along as far as he could, crying to his men hoarsely, hide me, hide me. The crew gathered round him. The boys looked over the side of the vessel and saw not the crocodile, but Peter Pan. It was Peter Pan who was ticking. The crocodile's clock had run down at last and Peter was imitating it. He was going tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. What rock too? Peter Pan waved at the boys to give a sign to the boys not to Pan give him away. Bikes like that. Wendy's tied up to the mast. Why? That's because Captain, Captain Hook ordered her to be tied up. Captain Hook lined up the boys for a flogging and sent Jukes to his cabin to fetch the cat o' nine tails. Jukes entered the dark room. There was a terrible scream followed by a blood curdling crow. Jukes had been killed by Peter Pan. What? Two more pirates followed to suffer the same fate. Will no one Fetch out this cursed doo-doo, grated Hook. By this time his crew had lost the nerve. No one else would venture into the dark room. So Hook sent in the eight boys. Let them kill each other, he said cruelly. Daddy, that was just what Peter had planned. He unlocked the boys' chains with a key he had found and armed them with Hook's weapons. There they are with the weapons, with the swords. They all crept out to the deck while the pirates' backs were turned. Peter freed Wendy, he untied her, and took her place at the mast wrapped in her cloak. Then he let out a terrific cock a doodle doo. The pirates spun round. Tis an unlucky ship, they cried, with a captain with a hook. Tis because we have a woman on board. Hook said quickly, throw her over the side. No one can save you now, Missy, said one of the kinder pirates, sadly. Here's one who can, said Peter, throwing aside the cloak. Peter Pan! And he went to battle with Dr. Captain Hook. A great fight began. Swords and cutlasses clashed 
and bodies fell into the water. Slightly counted up to eleven, and soon only Hook was left. His sword flashed like a circle of fire. Leave him to me, boys, cried Peter. Although his arm was shorter, Peter was nimbler. Nimble means faster, more nimble. And he soon wounded Hook. At the sight of his own ugly black blood, Hook turned pale and dropped his sword. He rushed to set fire to the powder magazine and blow the ship up. The daring Peter snatched the torch from his hand and threw it into the sea. Hook backed away from the menacing Peter and climbed on the bulwark. Peter aimed a kick at him. Hook lost his balance and went slithering down into the sea. Who fell for the sea? Hook fell in the sea, Captain Hook. The crocodile who'd followed Peter was waiting patiently below. He opened his big jaws and had the rest of Hook for his supper. That night, the boys slept in the parrot's bunks, and the next morning, Wendy made them all scrub the ship from stem to stem. Then they set off home for England with Peter as the captain. Meanwhile, in London, Mr. and Mrs. Darling were still grieving over the empty nursery and their lost children. Mr. Darling was sure that it was all his fault for chaining up Nana, the dog, and as a punishment, he slept in her kennel. He even went to the office in it. Please shut the window, Mrs. Darling, said Mr. Darling. It's very drafty in here. But Mrs. Darling said, you know I can't do that. The children might come home. Do you think they'll come home? Yes. Little did she know that they were on their way. She went into the day nursery and played the piano until Mr. Darling went to sleep. The children had crossed the sea now and were flying the last bits of the way. Peter and Tinkerbell were ahead of the others, as Peter had a plan. They found the open window to the nursery and flew in. Peter was going to shut the window so that Wendy would think her mother had forgotten her and go back with him to Neverland. But Mrs. Darling was sitting sadly at the piano with tears trickling down her face. She's fond of Wendy too, thought Peter miserably. We can't both have her. What had I better do? Then he said, oh, come on, Tink, we'd better let them in. So Wendy and Michael and John slipped into the nursery very surprised to see their father in the kennel. They decided to get in bed and pretend that they had never been away. So when Mrs. Darling came to see if her husband was asleep, the beds were full. Her children had come home. She thought it was a dream. When the children spoke to her, she put her arms round them all and called her husband and Nana the dog to share her happiness. so happy to have the children back. Peter Pan had had many strange experiences that the other children would never know. But now he was looking through the window at the one joy he would never share. Peter did come back one day. The Darlings adopted the Lost Boys and Mrs. Darling let Wendy go back to the Neverland once a year to help Peter with the spring cleaning. As Peter never grew up, he lived on and on in Neverland, and that's the end of the story. That's, that's, that's his boat, Captain Hook. That's Captain Hook's boat, but after he'd killed Peter, Captain Hook by making him eaten by the crocodile, it was Peter Pan's boat. Do you think it was a bit of a, a sad story? I found it, found it quite emotional at the end when the children came home to see their mother for the first time in, 
in a long time. Can you imagine how the mother felt? She cried and cried to have them back. So happy she was, she cried with joy. Would you cry with joy to have your mummy back if you hadn't seen her? Yes. What about Daddy? Uh, yes. Right. Into bed now. <laughs>